Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered here together this afternoon as we celebrate the life of Ronald Davis Mullis. And also we celebrate and bear witness to the good hope we share in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear then these words of Holy Scripture, first from the Psalms. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. And we hear the words of Jesus himself, who says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, who finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And especially this afternoon, we thank you for Ron Mullis, whom you have received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years and bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your eternal home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, as you are able, I do invite you to stand that together we might sing our first hymns. It's hymn 69, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Please be seated. We continue to hear the words of Holy Scripture with these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. We also hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see this day. Beyond touch and sight, some sure sign of your kingdom. And where our vision might fail, trust in your love, which we know never fails. Lift our heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Christ so that we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue to hear the words of comfort and hope that come to us from the scriptures, we turn next to the words of the 23rd Psalm. Hear this word of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We also hear these words as Paul writes in the fourth chapter of his letter to the Philippians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. At some point in the past here at Unity Presbyterian Church, there was a session or a class which encouraged members to think about five key questions. And one of those questions had to do with your wishes for services at the time of your death. Brenda attended the class and she brought home one of the booklets for Ronnie and Ronnie filled it out. He wanted to be sure that the 23rd Psalm was read today and that we sang the hymn, Here I Am Lord. Those were certainly easy to include in the service today. 
But what struck me most as I talked with Mark and Brenda this week was where Ronnie wrote that he wanted to be remembered as a loving husband, father, father-in-law, and grandfather. Yes, of all that he accomplished in his life, all that he was in his life, from being an identical twin to serving in the Air Force to working 41 years for Duke Power and Duke Energy, to his love of Sunday school here at Unity Presbyterian Church. Yes, all of that and much, much more. What Ronnie wanted to be remembered as was a loving husband, father, father father-in-law, and grandfather. And that's the legacy that he leaves behind. It's a kind of life we can model our own lives on, perhaps in a way similar to what Paul shared in that letter to the Philippians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's anything excellent or anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And as for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them. And the God of peace will be with you. It seems to me that Ronnie lived that kind of life. Was honorable and pleasing and commendable. Particularly to be there. To be present in key moments. Mark told me that his dad could be a little gruff sometimes, but... When the chips were down for anyone he loved, family or friends, Ronnie would be there. He didn't miss a tennis match while Mark was growing up. He showed Mark how to fix and maintain things. And then when Robin came along, he welcomed her as one of the family. And then Ty and Sammy, wow, he just loved being a grandfather and passing down this legacy to you as well. Yes, if Ronnie saw something good, he wanted to encourage it. He wanted to make it better and help it grow. I think that might have been what happened when his cousin introduced Ronnie to Brenda at a dance. It was like both of them immediately became better as the good that each of them had already was now shared in their love for each other. The result, 46 years of marriage. He was never prouder than when Brenda went back to school after they were married and when she graduated. And I suspect they were never happier together than when Ronnie retired and said, let's go to Rome. And off they went. The first of many happy trips and travels. Yes, Ronnie lived a life to be imitated. He learned that life from his own father, who he visited faithfully several times a week for lunch for years. He learned that life from Christ, the one who shared God's deep and abiding love with all of us so that we might be disciples of our crucified and yet risen Lord. And that's why we gather here today. Not only because we experienced and knew Ronnie's love, but because Christ himself has shown us the way to eternal life. And not just in the days to come, but here and now. It's a life that looks like the one described in the 23rd Psalm. It's a life where we're encouraged to rest in green pastures, to lie down beside still waters to follow these paths of righteousness. It's a life in which we do not fear even the darkest days because of the one who walks beside us. It's a life where we gather around overflowing tables with those that we love and those who are not yet friends. It's a life of goodness and mercy. My friends, that's the promise. That's our hope. It's the promise and the hope that Ronnie knew and trusted, especially and even during the truly difficult and painful days of these last nine months. 
It's the promise and the hope that can sustain you and me in the days ahead until that day of glad reunion in the life to come. Until then, keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and noticed in him. And the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God of grace, you've given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death. By rising from the grave, he opened the way to eternal life. Today we give you thanks and praise for your servant, Ron Mullis, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave him that kindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for Ron, death is past and pain ended. That he has now entered the joy that you have prepared. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, as we hear and reflect upon the good news of the gospel we've heard today, we have opportunity to respond as well with a declaration of what it is that we do believe, even on a day such as this. As you're able, I do invite you to stand that together we might make that declaration of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as you find them in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to remain standing and let us sing together hymn 664, Morning Has Broken.
hear these words of hope. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Let us pray. Now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ron Mullis. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, who you have received into the arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. As our service concludes here in the sanctuary, I do hope that you will come and follow us down through the hallway to the fellowship hall so that you might have opportunity to speak with the family there. But as we go, may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.